Um, as uh, Mark said, I definitely probably have the lowest tech idea, but I hope that I can prove that it probably has the biggest effect, uh, or it probably has an effect on maybe 90% of the world's population. Uh, the problem that I wanted to deal with um, has the following results. Here we go. One person dies from this problem every 24 seconds. It actually kills more people than malaria. It results in the transmission of 23 million cases of hepatitis every year. And let alone the, uh, the resulting ill health that comes from that, you can imagine the drop in productivity and the treatment costs that come associated with that, which we've heard from from many other speakers. It is actually responsible for 300,000 cases of HIV being transmitted every year. And ladies and gentlemen, it is a humble injection. This process that takes place billions of times every single year and delivered by healthcare workers is actually the problem that I was trying to solve. So now I've told you what it is, I can tell you that 62% of all injections given in India every year are unsafe. 20 million injections are given every year in Africa which contain the blood from the previous patient who was HIV positive. And 70% of all people in the developing world report a fever after receiving an injection and they think this is normal. And finally in Pakistan, 75% are unsafe but the World Health Organization say because everyone in Pakistan receives 14 injections per person per year that 90% or more are unsafe. So this happens for two reasons. One is reuse. And here you can see me with a lady in Islamabad in a hospital, and she's been treated with a burn. 10 years ago, she was treated with this burn. And during that treatment, she was iatrogenically infected by the healthcare worker with um, hepatitis B, and here she is in the, exactly the same room, 10 years later, being treated for this problem. And this is a scene that I see daily when I'm traveling around the developing world, an old glass syringe which should have gone out in the 1970s, being reused many times, and a needles floating in lukewarm water where the patient is simply asked to take their pick. And next, there's some live video that I want to show you which just uh, gives you some real evidence of this happening in India. And there should be a soundtrack, or I'll talk over it. Minutes. The tray they are using has medicine on it for all the patients on the floor, yet they only have two syringes. During this time, not once was a new syringe taken from a packet. The nurses openly throw the syringes back in the tray, then pick them up again to give the next injection. And not one patient or bystander ever challenges them. 42 injections with two syringes. And there were people with HIV on this hospital ward. There's also recycling. And here you can see out the back of a hospital a, a special bath made where they wash the syringes. This is a daily occurrence. You can see how many there are being washed and they separate them out, wash them. Of course, they don't get them all, but the water they're washing these syringes in uh, uh, is definitely infected. And they're taken back upstairs and used again. Also, there's an industry in recycling. Here's a young seven-year-old girl early in the morning collecting uh, medical waste from a health center. It's not just syringes, it's scalpels, blood bags. And with her brothers, she uh, recycles these. Um, and it's an industry where uh, some get chipped and made into plastic buckets, but some get washed if they're in good shape, repackaged and sold back out on a market. Ironically, they're always sold for more money than you can go and buy a sterile syringe with, which um, is always a mystery to me. And here you can see them being packaged to take, be taken away. In 1984, I read a newspaper article. Um, it was something I always wanted to do, be involved in a large intervention uh, like this, and when I read this newspaper article that predicted the reuse of syringes, that was what I wanted to do, and I jumped in. So two and a half years of research led me to this solution. And the solution is that I had to design a syringe which was made on existing equipment, 
could be made for exactly the same price as a normal syringe and used in the same way. And very quickly, I will uh, just show you how it works. So here's my syringe. Um, it is used in exactly the same way. Um, all the different functions are observed. You uh, inject, and if you try and reuse it and refill it, it locks inside the barrel and it can't be used again. Thank you. Just to give you some scale on this, a bottle of Coca-Cola, and again, we heard this example earlier, is around 50 cents in most of the countries that I go to. And one of our syringes, in fact, every syringe, because it is the same price, is around five cents. So there's actually no reason, if Coca-Cola is ubiquitous, there's no reason at all why syringes can't be uh, bought and used for every single injection. And there's precedence with shaving changing over to disposable razors to protect from the transmission of AIDS. And uh, this has been um, uh, well documented and well taken up by the, the shaving industry, the barbers in, in Asia. In, in India, I ran a campaign where we were able to um, target this 62% number. And in a five-day period, I was able to run a massive campaign uh, where over 500 million views of our healthcare message, which we put together, um, resulted in 240 press articles. And then I was able to go to the minister who had refused to see me for five years and mandate, uh, get a mandate put in place that these syringes were used all across the country of India in the public health system. And you can see a report there. So the results so far, just to kind of bring this to a close, since 2001, which was when I sold my first syringe, and here's a picture. So I started in 1984. Uh, in 2001, 17 years later, I was able to uh, be successful, if you like, and sell the first syringe. Um, and this was in Cambodia, where I saw the first one being used. Uh, since then, we've been able to sell two billion. We have a licensing model, 14 manufacturers who make them. Um, and we've been credited with saving 10 million fatal infections from taking place uh, because of that. Thank you. And hospitals uh, like in Temeki Hospital in Tanzania, they reported by using, the only change they made was using our syringes, the inpatient length of stay within a year changed from seven days to three. And imagine maximizing that, rolling that out across the whole of the developing world. It would be stunning. The nurses automatically started washing their hands, which I found really interesting. And for 200 auto-disabled syringes, the name of this product, the hospital administrator has worked out that he's saving $200 in downstream costs. This is $1 saves $200. More ADs, more AD syringes mean less syringes. So what's going to happen in the future? Um, well, I think that my work for the next few years is going to concentrate on these three areas. We've got to have global legislation. I'm hoping that I can manipulate enough countries to support me for a UN resolution. We've got to have public information campaigns because it's a partnership in the developing world between the patient and the doctor. Because most of the time they're not even trained, they're just quacks. So we have to close that loop. And finally, I think that we have to be brave and we have to start looking at open sourcing these, these types of innovations. And I'm very willing to give my product away if I know that all manufacturers in the world would be willing to make it on a royalty-free basis. And that's the final word that I would like to leave you with. Thank you.